Today I'll be talking about uh, skin manifestations of renal disorders. So these are the various skin conditions that you see which are commonly associated with renal disorders. Under this we have coexisting clinical entities with coexisting dermatological and renal manifestations that is various dermatological conditions which can exist with renal manifestations as well and then we have cutaneous manifestations of chronic renal failure so in renal failure patients we see certain skin uh, conditions and cutaneous manifestations in patients undergoing dialysis so patients who are on dialysis also can come with certain skin manifestations and finally we have cutaneous manifestations in renal transplant patients so patients who have undergone renal transplant will have certain clinical features as well we have various conditions like we have genetic conditions infectious conditions associated with this uh, genetic conditions would be we have firstly neurofibromatosis neurofibromatosis is a condition wherein there is in skin we have neurofibromas cafe ole macules axillary freckling and associated with that renal manifestation would be the presence of nephrotic syndrome nephritic syndrome and renal insufficiency in tuberous sclerosis is another condition tuberous sclerosis we have angiofibromas uh, chagrin patch perianth fibromas and ash leaf macules associated with that renal manifestation would be angiomyolipomas renal cell carcinoma and epidermal cysts we have ehlers danlos syndrome associated with that skin would be hyperelasticity there will be increased elasticity of the skin and joints the renal manifestation would be renal tubular acidosis medullary sponge kidney and renal hypoplasia likewise we have other genetic manifestations like mccune albright syndrome partial lipodystrophy fabry's disease bird hog dubey syndrome von hippel lindau disease all of these can be associated with certain skin manifestations as well as renal manifestations renal would be mostly in the form of nephritic syndrome nephrotic syndrome nephrocalcinosis then renal cysts chronic kidney disease renal neoplasms and renal cancers can be associated commonly we have certain autoimmune disorders like sle and systemic sclerosis in sle we find skin lesions like we have butterfly rash on the face which is seen which spares the nasolabial fold characteristically then we have mouth ulcers facial edema photosensitivity urticaria vasculitis renots phenomenon seen in sle along with that kidney manifestations should be the patients will have albuminuria casts nephritis without proteinuria hyper kalemia nephritic syndrome renal vein thrombosis and lupus nephritis in systemic sclerosis the patient will have hide bound skin feeling of tightness renots phenomenon swelling of the hands and fingers periangual telangiectasia ulceration of the finger tips leading to gangrene salt and pepper pigmentation pinched nose inability to open mouth along with that kidney manifestations would be when the patient can have proteinuria hypertension azotemia malignant hypertension scleroderma renal crisis can be the kidney manifestations of the patients next we have certain vasculitis associated with the renal manifestations we have henoch only in purpura polyarthritis nodosa cryoglobulinemia vaginus gromulonephritis and then we have uh, renoch disease in henoch chonlin purpura the patients can have palpable purpura on the legs with me which, which may extend on the thighs and abdomen kidney manifestation would be of nephritic syndrome nephrotic syndrome renal insufficiency in polyarthritis nodosa the patient can have purpura gangrene nodules cutaneous infarcts libido reticularis renoch phenomenon and mononeuritis multiplex as well the associated uh, kidney manifestations would be renal hypertension and renal failure can be present in the patient in cryoglobulinemia also the patient in vasculitis will have mostly develop features of purpura papules erythematous papules macules libido reticularis kidney manifestations would be of acute renal failure chronic renal failure membranous glomerulonephritis patients can have uh, bacterial infections mycobacterial infections viral infections hepatitis c hiv uh, and leptospiral infections as well affective endocarditis the patients can have osseous nodes and janeway lesions can be present in the patient associated kidney manifestations would be of glomerulonephritis okay in streptococcal infections the patient can present with erythema nodosa morbidiform rash associated kidney manifestations would be of glomerulonephritis in tuberculosis and leprosy as well the patient can come with proteinuria renal cyst microscopic hematuria renal tb also can be along with the uh, cutaneous tb the patients can have renal tb as well in viral infections in uh, yellow fever hanta virus hepatitis c hiv dengue also we find uh, nephritic syndrome nephrotic syndrome being associated leptospirosis is spirochetal uh, infection wherein uh, kidney will have um, kidney manifestations would be of renal failure uh, other conditions like in sarcoidosis gout and amyloidosis also kidney can be involved with again renal failure proteinuria hematuria nephrocalcinosis hypercalcemia 
hypocalciuria can be present in the kidney along with the various uh, skin manifestations that the patient can have in the uh, respective disorder now coming to the patients with the chronic renal failure and their skin manifestation here the patient can present with ichthyosis and xerosis there will be dry skin mostly here and most common can be uh, the severity can be assessed with modified molten scale wherein uh, we have zero with smooth skin rough skin without scaling would be one and two would be rough skin with scaling so this is the grading of the severity of the dryness given to individual patients and the patients can have pruritus and prurigonodularis as well here the pruritus occurs due to vitamin A parathyroid levels mast cell hyperplasia or because of peripheral neuropathy and xerosis clinically the skin will appear normal only they may have various lichenified and uh, hyperkeratotic lesions as well patients also can have acquired perforating disorders wherein uh, perforating disorders are the disorders wherein there is uh, transepidermal elimination of collagen keratin or various other substances would be eliminated okay under that we have keratotic papules nodules and varicose lesions uh, uh, varicose lesions that the patients can have we have bullous disorders that the patients can have they can present with porphyric cutanea tarda or pseudoporphyria pseudoporphyria is a condition wherein there is normal level of porphyrins in the blood but still there will be bullous lesions similar to porphyria porphyria like porphyria cutanea tarda only it will be present other conditions like we have um, fibrogen nephrogenic fibrosing or dermatopathy patients can have nfd that is nephrogenic fibrosing dermatopathy then patients can have calcifying disorders with calcinosis cutis and calciphylaxis uh, with ulcers on the patients being present there will be deep angulated stellate ulcers seen here in the patient and then they can have recurrent skin infections because of decreased t-cell count anemia and chronic renal disease uh, will cause anemia and pallor hyperpigmentation can be present in the photo distributed areas form plantar areas and in the mucosa LOSU of the skin because of the urochrome pigmentation also can be seen these are the manifestations of chronic renal failure other than that we also have patients with purpura ecchymosis because of the platelet dysfunction increased vascular fragility or because of heparin during dialysis or increased uh, or uh, which has decreased during treatment you know, the patients can have uremic frost uremic feta uremic frost and uremic feta uremic frost is whitish powdery residue which is left behind on the skin that is on the face neck trunk and beard area because of evaporation of high amounts of uh, urea which is present in the sweat so because of high amounts of urea which is seen in the sweat on evaporation it will leave a white powdery residue okay that itself is uremic frost but it is no longer seen because of it, uh, advent of dialysis which is present these days uremic feeder is uh, there's this ammoniacal odor seen because of increased urea in the saliva and its breakdown product which is ammonia other manifestations would be gynecomastia oral mucosa would be uh, there will be a large tongue with teeth markings that is tongue sign of uremia angular chelitis stomatitis xerostomia can be seen hair manifestations like telogen fum lustreless sparse hair nail manifestations with linsey nails mese lines mucus line hy subungal hyperkeratosis coilonychia onycholysis can be seen linsey nail is a half and half nail wherein the proximal part would be white and the distal part would be pink or uh, yellowish in color the distal part would be okay that is half and half nails which is seen next coming to manifestations of uh, hemodialysis patients can have pruritus xerosis hyperpigmentation accelerated signs of cutaneous aging like actinic elastosis extensive wrinkling of the neck which is called as cutis rhomboidalis nuke and telangiectasia patients are prone to getting infections uh, causing pyodermas acquired perforating disorders also are seen in these patients poor wound healing renault's phenomenon dupentrin's contracture pseudoporphyria malignant skin tumors and at the sites of av shunt at the sites of artery venous shunt the patients can develop infections of cannula extravasation of the blood thrombophlebitis hematomas allergic contact dermatitis irritant contact dermatitis vascular complications like digital ischemia and aneurysms also can be present at that particular site uh, the manifestations of renal transplantation would be the patients can have infections inflammatory lesions drug induced lesions ectri malignant malignant lesions and others infections would be bacterial infections like pyodermas fungal would be tinea versicolor and candidal infections viral infections would be viral wards herpes and uh, herpes zoster varicella infections parasitic infections like acanthamoeba infections inflammatory conditions like seborrheic dermatitis patients can have lichen planus perioral dermatitis also they can have drug induced lesions because of immunosuppression they will be taking drugs like cyclosporine and glucocorticoids cyclosporine can cause gingival hyperplasia and hypertrichosis whereas uh, glucocorticoids can cause acne form eruptions and cushingoid appearance pre malignant malignant lesions like porokeratosis kaposi sarcoma can be present in general population basal cell carcinoma is more common than squamous
squamous cell carcinoma but in these particular patients squamous cell carcinoma is more common than basal cell carcinoma and then others like pruritus and xerosis also they can have there's an entity called as nephrogenic fibrosing dermopathy in this patients will have sclerodermoid skin change that is scleroderma like skin changes they will have thickened skin uh, this is seen in acute chronic and transient renal failure also in patients with renal transplantation you can see this here it is said to be because of aberrant uh, circulating fibroblasts which are present and also because the patient would have undergone gadolinium enhanced mri because of these two reasons uh, nephrogenic fibrosing dermopathy can be seen the patients will have scleroderma like skin changes here the patients uh, thickening of the skin would be basically present and the patients will have symmetrical plaques and nodules which are which also have body orange appearance with amoeboid borders basically present on the trunk and extremities and rapidly these become confluent fibrotic skin with lumpy nodular plaques now again they also can have pigmentary changes and flexion contractures can be present also systemic involvement with diaphragmatic fibrosis can be present and calcification of various internal organs like lungs kidney also can be present aggressive physiotherapy as a treatment treatment is required here aggressive physiotherapy can be given along with narcotics for pain management and extra corporeal plasma pheresis also can be done as a treatment modality for nephrogenic fibrosing dermopathy